Hi, all of you awesome scuba divers out there. Welcome to Scuba Dive Magazine, your favorite place for the latest scuba diving news and gear reviews. This video is sponsored by Techline, who manufacture all sorts of tech diving equipment. Uh, you can check out their range by visiting techlinediving.eu. But if you're new to backplate BCDs, uh, they may have been or appear a little bit confusing because they come in a whole range of different styles and features and there are so many different manufacturers. So I figured I'd break down a few features that you might see and what they're good for along with what to kind of look for, who it's good for, who it might not be good for, um, along with when's a good time to move into backplate and harness BCDs. Um, so yeah, let's take a quick look and uh, kind of learn a little bit more about back plates and harnesses. The first point is when is it right to transition to a backplate and a wing, or even just a wing style BCD? I mean, I remember when I first started diving and I was buying my own equipment and the only BCDs that I'd only ever used were school BCDs, which were all jackets. So that's all I'm used to. And granted, there wasn't the same amount of information and advice online as there is now, but it was still quite daunting to take that plunge and dive in something other than what I learnt to dive with. There isn't a big green flag to dive a wing as soon as you hit a certain number of dives. Um, it's just kind of a, a gut feeling. You can 100% start diving a wing straight out of the gate as your very first BCD. I know a few training agencies and a few schools train with a wing, just they, they don't even bother with that jacket phase, they just teach on wings. A recreational wing can be a nice gateway BCD. It will have a very similar harness to your school BCD that you learned to dive with, it's all adjustable and it's all padded. You'll probably see a few posts from divers online who say that wing BCDs push you down face down, um, which is only half true. They are designed to hold you in that flat horizontal position in the water, but on the surface, if you lean back a bit, you can very easily stay upright. It's not that much of an issue. It's only if you are unconscious on the surface where the face down thing is a problem, and hopefully you have a good enough buddy who won't let that happen and they'll roll you over. If you are unsure about whether you'll regret buying a Wingstar BCD, rest assured that most divers eventually migrate to wing style BCDs anyway, and they never turn back. Wings offer you a greater freedom in the water because the only thing that's really touching you is the harness and the back plate. You don't have the bladder around your waist. So especially when it's fully inflated, you really don't notice it. Compared to a jacket style BCD, when that's fully inflated, it can actually squeeze on your rib cage. And if you go to a full backplate and harness system, that gives you even more freedom than a recreational wing because you can pick and choose each component and kind of blend them together as well as add and remove whatever you want to a certain point and literally build your own BCD. You don't need to be a technical diver or even a particularly advanced diver to dive in a backplate and wing. Any diver can dive in a wing style BCD or a backplate and wing. The first thing to consider uh, when we're looking at backplates is the material that you want your backplate to be made from. Most divers choose a backplate, it's going to be made from steel. Steel is strong, it's also pretty heavy, which might sound like a bad thing, but being heavy allows you to take a bit of lead off of your weight belt and the stainless steel backplate puts some weight in a really handy place. You obviously can't drop the weight because it's literally part of your BCD, but putting some weight close to your back and quite high up your back as well compared to a weight belt around your waist, it can give you a better trim position in the water because more of that weight is up towards your shoulders. A lot of divers, they, they're a head up position, so a bit more weight over their shoulders can help to bring them down. Steel is best if you're diving at home uh, or you don't mind a little bit of extra weight in your luggage. It's usually the cheapest metal option. 
and it's going to last your entire career. Uh, it's three mil thick sheet of steel. It, it's pretty tough. You can find some six mil uh, in some places, which are much more heavy, uh, but most steel back plates are probably about three mil thick. Aluminium is the next most common metal. Uh, it's the lighter alternative to steel and is a bit more travel friendly. It can be a bit softer, so it can bend with heavier loads. If you're diving like heavy twin steel cylinders frequently, then you might want to be careful because they can twist and bend it a bit. But if you're more of a traveling scuba diver and you want something rigid, then aluminium is a good choice. Titanium, titanium is pretty rare. Uh, you do find titanium backplates out there. Um, they're strong and they're light, but mm, they're pretty expensive. The same with carbon fiber. Carbon fiber backplates are incredibly lightweight and they have that cool pattern, but again, they're quite expensive. And finally, you can find material backplates. Material backplates, they, they don't have any of that rigidity but they do have all of the mounting points that you typically find on a standard back plate. So yeah, they're great for incredibly lightweight travel, and but you don't get the benefit of the back plate, which is that like rigidity, that rigid mounting point. So you can mount everything onto it and it moves with you. Um, with that fabric, you, you still have that flexibility. So your cylinders are still gonna move around on your back. This is probably where you have the most choice uh, with your harness, but you can kind of boil them down to about four different choices um, that you can then further customize. The first choice uh, or the first option is what I call a recreational harness. They're often called like comfort harness or something to that effect. They're basically a recreational BCD with the back cut off of them and you just get the front harness section. They do come in different sizes, just like a recreational BCD, and they have adjustable shoulder straps, uh, often with pinch clips as well. So it's very similar to probably what you've been diving with already. You then bolt the harness onto a back plate with something like book screws, and then you're good to go. Everything is stitched into place with these. Uh, there's very little adjustment that you can make to where the D-rings or something are other than like tightening the straps. You can tighten those straps, uh, but that's about the only customization that you can do. Up from that, you start to see more two inch webbing, but they're still called like comfort harnesses sometimes. It depends on the manufacturers. Um, th there's no hard fast name for what these particular styles are. Uh, two inch webbing is your friend when it comes to harnesses, uh, you'll see it everywhere and it allows you to add and locate hardware to build a harness for you. Less of a material backplate, uh, if any backplate to, uh, to these, uh, these harnesses, but big shoulder pads that stop the two inch webbing from rubbing and digging into your shoulders or your wetsuit. Still adjustable buckles on both shoulders, but you tend to see fewer quick release buckles. It tends to be, you can lengthen it, you can shorten it, uh, but that's it. There's no actual like break in, uh, in that loop. Then we get to what I call like a semi DIR. Uh, DIR is an equipment setup and a style of diving that you'll often see mentioned when you start backplate and wings. DIR stands for doing it right, uh, or sometimes diving it right. And it's been refined over the years to reduce as many failure points in your equipment and your procedures to dive as safely as possible. But it can be quite Spartan. So you'll often find compromises where the majority of the harness is made from a single piece of two inch webbing, but one of the shoulder straps, usually the left one, will have some kind of adjustment to aid donning and doffing. Then we get to the DIR harness, or at least a single piece harness. Both shoulders and the waistband are made from a single piece of two inch webbing. They're incredibly simple, usually the cheapest because webbing is cheap, but they are tough to don and doff because if you just imagine trying to get into a BCD that's already been done up so that it's tight enough to go diving, you now have to get into that BCD when you're fully kitted up. Um, once you're in, you're in. Uh, but yeah, donning and doffing can be a little bit of a uh, struggle. The crotch strap 
is common across all harness styles. Uh, it typically attaches at the bottom of the back plates, kind of around your tailbone, in a single or a double point. Sometimes you get two, a Y-shaped crotch strap with a D-ring for storage. It's quite a handy place to have a D-ring. At the front, there's gonna be a loop that you thread your waistband through and usually a stitched D-ring at the front of your, uh, uh, your crotch strap for your DPV. Crotch straps, typically made from a softer webbing compared to shoulder and waist, uh, which is usually fairly stiff to help it hold its shape. So when, you, when you're trying to get in, uh, you pull that shoulder strap up and it stays upright to help you get your shoulder through instead of just collapsing down. Um, and it helps to hold hardware in place because it's a bit thicker. Where you settle, on that spectrum between a recreational harness design and a DIR harness is very much up to you. Most divers tend to settle somewhere in the middle, myself included. The single piece harness really does minimize failure points that can break. Uh, if you've got pinch clips and things, they can and will break. And of course you don't want that to happen in the water. And a single piece harness gives you all of that customization that you need to add and locate hardware like D-rings exactly where you need them. But I still like a little bit of padding and some adjustability from time to time to get in and out of my BCD. So I tend to go for like that third option, somewhere around there, a little bit of adjustability, a little bit of padding, but it's still a single piece of webbing. The buoyancy part of your BCD wings come in a range of styles and sizes, but you can boil them down to three basic styles, whether they're made for single cylinders, twin cylinders, or side mount. If it's made for single cylinders, then you'll find a small flat section down the center of the wing and sometimes vertical slots for cam bands. The corrugated hose is usually off to one side, usually over your left hand shoulder, so that it doesn't interfere with the single valve of your single cylinder, but sometimes they are in the center. Um, that one's not a hard and fast rule, but it's usually an easy way to tell the difference. For twin cylinders, that space in the middle is much larger, so you don't tend to see those vertical slots, or at least you don't have much use for them uh, because you only use them to thread cam bands through and for twin cylinders you're not going to be using them uh, and the corrugated hose is located in the middle uh, to stay out of the way of the pair of valves either side of it. Side mount wings are usually diamond shaped so that most of your buoyancy is in the small of your back and it can wrap around your waist. The corrugated hose usually runs from around your waist and to your chest, uh, not over your shoulder, uh, but designs vary. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see one coming over your shoulder or from your right hand side. Uh, they definitely vary. The main difference to a side mount wing is that there are no mounting points down your spine. Um, they're made for side mounts. They don't have slots for cam bands or grommets for twinning bolts. Uh, they're made for side mounted cylinders. Some wings are single core, meaning that the bladder is made from just a single piece of material, which makes it a lot lighter. Others will have a protective outer shell over that internal bladder as a separate item. If the external shell is damaged by brushing up against something or whatever, it's not the end of the world. Your bladder inside is still all right, you can still control your buoyancy, but that external shell has protected it. And even if it is damaged, that internal bladder, then you should be able to get a replacement or at least patch it. With a single core wing, that is it. They're a lot lighter for travel, but more than much more likely to get damaged. Sticking with bladders, some wings might be called redundant bladder or be like a, a such and such RB, and they have two bladders inside of them. Uh, you only use one. They each have their own inflator. 
You have one inflator that goes over your left hand shoulder, just as usual. That's your primary, the one that you use for most of the dive. And you also have a second inflator that usually goes down your right hand side that you use if something happens to the other one. So that if the first stage that's controlling that BCD fails, uh, the hose goes bang, the inflator goes bang, whatever it is, you then have a second one that you can continue to adjust your buoyancy. Most single and double wings today are donuts, a full O shape, so that air is free to migrate around the wing, whichever is the highest point. You can find horseshoe wings, which are just U-shaped. They're far less popular today. Their benefits are a little bit vague, but they usually involve a bit of space around the small of your back for inverted tanks or for like standing your valves, uh, correction, standing your cylinders upright without the bottom of the cylinder standing on top of the bladder. How much lift is in your bladder is up to you and how much additional buoyancy you plan to need. If you don't have a lot of equipment, uh, you're diving somewhere nice and it's just recreational diving and you're pretty neutrally buoyant without adding any air to your BCD, then you shouldn't need a huge wing. If you're diving, heavy steel cylinders and your exposure suit is likely to lose a lot of buoyancy at depth that you need to compensate for, then you're going to want a larger capacity wing so you can always attain positive buoyancy or at least neutral buoyancy. Again, there's no steadfast rule about how much buoyancy you need, but too much is better than not enough. Uh, if you do have a larger wing, then when it's not inflated, it can kind of flap around a bit, uh, which can be annoying and it can catch on things. So some wings have retention systems, which are basically a, an elastic cord that wraps around the sides and pulls the excess material in when you deflate your BCD. They also have the unfortunate traits that if you puncture the BCD during the dive, they'll squeeze any air inside out. Uh, so you do have to weigh that up. Hardware is all of the D-rings and the clips and things. Most hardware comes with the harness, either pre-fitted uh, or something that you just thread on yourself. Similar to back plates, it mainly comes down to the weight the, we're talking grams here when it comes to individual D-rings, but every little helps. Uh, D-rings are either going to be flat or bent. Bent D-rings are for shoulders. Flat are typically for everything else, like your waist and your crotch strap. You can find low-profile D-rings that are a little bit low profile so they don't stick out quite as much you can get sliding d-rings so you can adjust the position during the dive and some with a fixed tri-glider tri-gliders are used to lock hardware in place on the harness so they don't slide around some you can have fixed onto the actual d-ring most just tend to be loose steel anodized aluminium titanium and plastic uh, plastic is very light but it does break quite easily especially in very cold waters it makes it a bit more brittle but it's okay for traveling and warm water diving uh, just don't expect it to uh, like take a cylinder or a weight belt landing on top of it a more long-term lightweight option is aluminium or titanium we're starting to see more and more titanium d-rings which are pretty cool uh, they're also a very very lightweight these are quite handy uh, they're just rubber loops and they're used to tidy up any extra webbing uh, from flapping around and from holding tools so they uh, they hold them close to the harness so if you clip a a, a torch off to a d-ring it doesn't dangle when you're horizontal in the water it keeps it close to your harness whilst you can find pre-made ones they're traditionally made from just sections of bicycle inner tubes cut into like a half inch width divers would just used to just go to their local bike shop ask for any decent size inner tubes that were being thrown out because they had punctures it's no use to the bike shop anymore so instead of it just going into the landfill might as well go to a diver and in a tube from a mountain bike would usually produce enough for any diver because they do wear out and break eventually and with a mountain bike uh, they're typically big chunky tires so you want something that when you lay it flat it's a good two plus inches to go over and around the webbing the thinner stuff is quite good because it's quite easy to stretch over tools uh, but it's a bit more fragile uh, the thicker stuff it's harder 
to stretch over things, but it lasts a little bit longer. So you kind of make your choice with that. So hopefully now you know a little bit more about back plates and wings, uh, and you'll be able to better judge whether a comp component is right for you or not. A lot of the big manufacturers create combination kits for divers with the most popular components. So for cold water diving, you'll have a lot of steel components and a large bladder. For lightweight travel, it'll be a few aluminium with a compact wing, uh, or you can just pick and choose what works for you. That's the best thing about back plate and harnesses and wings. Uh, you can literally just chop and change things as you progress. Techline uh, actually has a dedicated section on their website called Perfect Configurations, where you can literally follow a flowchart to bring you to the system that suits your particular diving in mind. Uh, Techline has a, a combination set to suit all divers from female specific ranges to cold water diving, warm water diving. Uh, if you're diving singles, twins, side mounts, you name it, uh, techlinediving.eu is a great place to find out what kind of backplate and harness setup is best for you. Don't forget to head over to our website, scubadivermag.com, and consider a magazine subscription. Uh, and subscribe to the channel here for more scuba videos. Thank you for watching, everybody, and of course, safe diving.